Okay, so we talked about uh, BRT versus LRT. Now, if we talk about uh, metro versus LRT, in Moscow there is a federal federal program that they subsidize metro in many cities, but they never subsidize LRT. So a city, if it can get money for for metro from the federal government, it builds metro, and nobody even consider a possibility to build LRT uh, instead of metro because this is a federal uh, rule. Uh, but in many cases, LRT can be better than Metro, right? Uh, absolutely. Uh, as I mentioned many times, people ask me, is, is bus better than rail? Is rail better than bus? And uh, uh, are you for Metro or are you for light rail? <laughs> and the answer is always, no, I'm not for one mode because there is not one mode that is better than better than other modes in all situations. Mm -hmm. There are domains for each mode. So if we start, uh, for example, at lightly traveled routes and suburban routes and so on, or medium-sized cities, the bus dominates. It's mm -hmm. it's much. It's the only one that can be economically justified. It can be changed if there are growing suburbs and so on. Uh, it, um, in general, it's, it's cheaper to operate if it has a light load of passengers. Then, as we have more and more buses and more and more, more and more passengers, we can go to larger buses and improve that. But then at a certain point, uh, usually when we have many bus lines, three bus lines, five bus lines, in big cities you may have 12, 15 bus lines coming to one corridor and traveling on that corridor mm -hmm. to toward center city. Mm -hmm. Then you find easily, and you can prove it easily, that instead of bringing all those buses and they going, they are going at very short uh, intervals and bypassing and stopping for each other and all of this, uh, and irregular, irregular headways and intervals, mm -hmm. uh, it would be much better that on that main trunk line you put rail which goes in larger units more reliably and, and on schedule and more regularly and so on. So you do have to transfer them from bus feeders to this. But still, in many cases, that has happened in many cities, that once you build rail uh, you do have that transferring, but the whole system attracts uh, very okay. substantially mm -hmm. more passengers. Mm -hmm. But if, if we're taking a rail and subway... Now, if we talk about light rail and subway, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So we are going on more okay. and more passengers. Mm -hmm. So instead of buses, we change to rail. We mm -hmm. can change to light rail or to uh, metro. By the way, coming a little bit quick, uh, another uh, topic. I, in my Shukino district, when I elected to a local council, have a, a route to another uh, neighborhood called Strogino, and it goes through the bridge. It says, here is Shukino, here is like Strogino, and there's a bridge. Yes. And in this bridge, there is, a, in the middle, there is a tramway lanes. And there is tramways going there. But on the road, there is many, a lot of buses going. A lot of buses, and they, 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 they have this problem that uh, you're talking about, that they too much, and they stop, and stuff like this. But the rail don't take all the passengers, but just still use the, continue to use the buses for some reason. Uh, maybe because the rail is going very, very slow <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, if the rail is slower, they will not change the rail. But in this case, uh, we, we, you, you just work on improving the rail until the, you don't need the buses, or you can keep buses duplicated the rail? You usually, you usually, well, if you, if you have some buses coming and there is, there would be only a half a kilometer joint line, you would not make them transfer for this, this 500 meters. So for no, no, no. buses that exactly. merge, Here is, uh, but if the buses thing. are going three kilometers parallel, five kilometers parallel, all the way, then you do not, you do not duplicate. Mm -hmm. It would be much more economical mm -hmm. to really increase capacity of light rail, mm -hmm. speed it up to its potential, and uh, treat it better at intersections. And light rail going across intersections 
has much higher capacity because one train takes a certain amount of time to cross. Mm -hmm. Five buses that would be alternative would take much more time. So that, it, that avenue would need a lot longer signal and less green time for cross traffic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why the light rail is especially advantageous when it, when it uh, goes through intersections and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, no, you do not duplicate. Once you build, then the marginal cost, marginal benefit of rail is much greater than marginal cost of rail. So, in the, I maybe can show you a map on this later, but there is like subway here and neighborhood here. It's long way, f some, some seven kilometers from subway to this neighborhood, and it is duplicated. There is very good tracks that not... Uh, the right of way like B, but they have only three intersections and they go, yes, or maybe four, uh, and he, here is subway and also you have a, a lot of buses going the same way and in the neighborhood also they going, the tram go have good lines in the neighborhood two different lines, right, and uh, so the buses don't have much more. Uh, Coverage. Coverage, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this case, you, you better not, dupli ne not duplicate buses on all the way, you just bring all the people with the light rail to this neighborhood doing it faster and do buses only in the neighborhood. The you you then try to really achieve much higher and more reliable and more comfortable ride on, on the tramway. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about five or seven kilometers, that's certainly a strong case that you should transfer and not duplicate. Mm -hmm. And you would reduce the labor cost on transit also. Mm -hmm. It would cost you less. I think about it, it's already 20, about 30 years this system is working like this. Yeah. And it's... then I did ne never even heard an uh, offer to change it for only a light rail and better light rail. <laughs> well, because people really in Moscow, they still most of them do not understand what is light rail. They are with tramway from 1920s. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And I remember in this, also this place, the tramways used to go very, very slow in three intersections before the subway. So many people coming with the tramway till the stop, two, two stops before the subway, then switching to bus because bus... Oh, <laughs> And then so continue. it delays then the tramway and the bus. Yes, yeah, right? and, and everything gets congested. Yeah, yeah. And I thinking about it, I, I heard a lot of. Now they brought the subway to this neighborhood, and now it's less uh, traffic from this in this line. But I never heard about any offer to make efficient light rail in this, which is now looks to me simple and good. And they they changing the rails like uh, every five years or something. No. Uh, I, I remember at least two times they changed the rails uh, in the last like 12 years, I don't know why, but so the rails are, are good and uh, it's, it's now can, uh, it's already can uh, run uh, very fast there, but for some reason they continue with the buses and uh, mm. this system is continuing. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. That, that yeah. Not, that's not the way to operate. Yeah, well. You can do, you can do better. Strange. Again, and now I'm thinking about it when we talked this, all this week, it looks really strange to me because this is the same company operates. It. Yeah. Same yeah, Moscow right. Trans, it's not right. different companies. Unless you have a different unit in that company operating tramways. Might be, yeah. And the buses. Maybe. It's like many good. times when we proposed light rail transit for many cities in the United States, some of the biggest opponents of that were metro people because <laughs> they were afraid that some metro would be uh, replaced by light rail, although light rail would serve more people and would be better, but it's not, it's some other guys. They, people do have often their uh, biases, their, their uh, emotional and special interest mm -hmm. uh, motives in, in deciding of cars. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and therefore, when you want to build metro, there are all kinds of opponents of buses. If you want to improve buses from mini buses, you get sometimes mafia activity on yeah. the, on the yeah. mini buses and so on. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. okay. The extreme is in South Africa where some of those uh, group taxis and taxis and so on, if there is some change between them, they are shootings, they are killing each other for, for business. Well, yeah, it, so. it was something like this in Russia in the 90s, but now it's not. Okay. Well, yeah. This still is interesting, but let's come back to the subway stuff. Now, yes, we are going on uh, now. One, 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 one second, uh, about this system again, it looks like they're losing a lot of money, a lot of capacity, a lot of everything, with just not changing this simple thing, yes. making the light rail quicker. It's That's so true. simple, and, and then the same people in the government and this the company talking about efficiency and about yes. the expanding the transit system and about all these wars where they don't do so simple thing. Yes. Yeah, that's now yes. it looks very strange to me. I, I might now, write a letter about this because it's my neighborhood. So. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, Can then, then you will build light rail. Yeah. Now, when you start having 10,000 people per hour on the line, or 15,000, or 20,000, 20,000 is light rail stretched really to its maximum. Mm -hmm. 20,000? Metro, metro can perform that much easier. Mm -hmm. Metro can go to 40, 50,000. Mm -hmm. So when you are really in that domain of 20, 30, 40,000, there's no discussion that Metro is absolutely the most efficient mm -hmm. and most economical mode mm -hmm. uh, per person, per passenger. Even if you consider the cost of building. Even if you consider that, but, but you do have to add the the value of that for the city, for the permanence of the city, for the character of the city, and so on. Because mm -hmm. then it has really an independent system that is reliable and that can easily, you can then easily suppress the auto use more and have more people mm -hmm. in transit orientation. So uh, how do you estimate how many people will be in the line? Because in, in Russia they are it looks like the only estimation is that if it's one million people in the city, then we need metro, and if it's nine hundred fifty thousand, yeah. we are okay That's with that. It's a very <laughs> blank, simplistic <laughs> decision, yeah. uh, which is unrealistic because it's not only the number of people in the entire city, because you may have, for example, a city that is that is a kind of a round city, center city, and it goes in all directions. Or you may have a city that is on the bank of a river or lake, I don't know, maybe Volgograd or something. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. So it goes to one side only. Then you have much higher density for each corridor. Then a few cities, is, and also Omsk, have a river and two sides on the river. and Then you, you have so-called corridor cities between hills mm -hmm. or valleys or along the rivers and mm -hmm. so on. And if you have such a city, then you can easily justify metro when you have 400,000 people in the city. Mm -hmm. Easily. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it's a flat city and, uh, and other conditions that are not so, uh, rely, so much relying on transit, you can maybe handle it with a million and a half or two million still without the metro. Mm -hmm. and, and if you have good light rail, you, mm -hmm. you can move the, the boundary of, of uh, the metro. And uh, light rail really has been introduced in a number of cities, uh, and then metro comes, and the metro people say, now we only go to metro. And that's, again, very simplistic, and uh, in well-planned cities, that has been uh, rejected. Mm -hmm. When I was in Vienna, when they were planning Metro, mm -hmm. 1972, I visited them, they were only talking about the plans for the Metro. Mm -hmm. I said, that's fine, but you will still have buses and tramways, mm -hmm. right, and so on. They wouldn't, wouldn't even talk about that. <laughs> they were not concerned. Mm -hmm. And there are two problems there. One is that you do not, you cannot neglect because the first metro line will carry 10 or 15 percent of the riders, not 50 percent or 80 percent. So vast majority will still be on buses and trams. And second, even if uh, everything is well planned, no metro is successful without 
integration and feeders by others. Vienna has overcome that. They have now about six metro lines, very good system, and regional rail, and they have one of the largest tramway networks in the world. Mm -hmm. So they keep doing that. Munich, there was a pressure to stop tramways when metro came. After about 10 years of discussions, mm -hmm. they decided to keep the, uh, the tramways also, and they have been even extending some of the tramway lines also. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many, many cities which have metro and tramway, mm -hmm. or light rail. Okay. Brussels. So if we're coming to this question that we need metro or we need light rail or there, uh, in many Russian cities and Russian uh, officials not even consider this choose because they have only the money for metro and that's all. That is a edict. It's, it's a law mm -hmm. imposed on a very simplistic basis, not at all sophisticated, not up-to-date basis. Mm -hmm. When we really had, you know, 80 years ago, we did have bus, trolleybus, tramway, metro, and then somewhat independent from that regional rail and railways. Mm -hmm. Now we are integrating all of these, and we have had such developments that we have many systems which are between tramway and from tramway to light rail, from light rail to metro, from bus to BRT, and we have regional rail coming and having joint stations and joint fares and so on, and sometimes even joint tracks mm -hmm. with the metro. Mm -hmm. So we've gone to integration. We don't have these totally independent uh, modes of transportation, mm -hmm. and it works much, much better. And better for passengers and better economically. So, yeah, I hope it will be... We, we should, maybe you and me, write a letter to Russian officials in the federal government. Yes, that, yeah, that it's, yes. it's about time to review that kind of policy. Yeah. Yes. Because, for example, the same thing in Yekaterinburg, I think. No, in Yekaterinburg, I don't remember the exact numbers, but in Omsk, I do remember. They're trying to build a very small line that will serve maybe 10%, maybe 5% of the people. It will cross the river, it's, it's important because uh, it's, uh, many people live in the other side of the river, there's only two yeah. bridges, uh -huh. and it will be another bridge with this, but uh, with the metro. But uh, it's a relatively short line. And they used already a close to it's already close to half a billion dollars for this, and they saying that they will need additional billion to complete the wow. six stations or five stations, and then if it's one and a half billion, I don't know what's the you estimated costs of light rail or something per kilometer. Do you have any numbers in in the head? Just to take your Well, that's very hard. It, depends on the country and it depends on even metro you know metro if you're tunneling it it may cost you yeah of course but I, I saw 18 million but if you're running somewhere on the surface just protected it can be four times less mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and light rail the same way you know, so I, I saw a number of uh, but it is uh, yeah. it is overall that light <laughs> excuse me light rail would be overall at least three times cheaper, mm -hmm. which means that uh, if you're planning one metro line of 10 kilometers, for the same investment you can get three lines of 10 kilometers mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. a network that is at least three times as long. Mm -hmm. In my calculations, but that I don't know about Omsk maybe because it's very expensive system was in Omsk, it was eight or seven or eight times compared yes. to middle uh, to average cost of light rail in the US. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so and also in Omsk so we'll talk about Omsk later, but uh, also uh, people in, in Russia, uh, many like, officials say that the people in the cities want to have a metro no matter what. They, they say that we need a metro because we feel like, like status and stuff like this. Like our, our city is a good city if we have a metro in it. 
that is a nice uh, feeling for monuments and such things, which are really not an economic thing and functional thing. But if you want to, uh, if you want to use transportation, then you do consider quality of it. But the main thing is how does it function? What role does it perform? And a city which has 30 kilometers of high quality rail lines is certainly more livable, more attractive than a city with one only, with, with one line of 10 kilometers. Even if it's underground? Even if it's underground. Now, that is also a, a dangerous feeling or belief by passengers, by, by uh, residents of the city, because if you over-design something, uh, you do not achieve, you may achieve some symbol, but not something functional. You can even uh, have great problems maintaining that. Yeah, that's what and I heard from Samara. A, a guy from is... Samara told me yeah, that uh, half of the budget of the city public transit goes to a metro that uh, serve 12 or 15 percent of the... In, in, in Bucharest, they went to build real rapid transit metro. And, uh, you know, Ceausescu tore down the old city of Bucharest, everything that was really interesting. He wanted to redo it in concrete and monuments, monstrosities, and so on. Then when they opened it up, half of the lights were off because they didn't have money to maintain the bulbs in the lights. So uh, uh, there are other examples, and this is what happens, what I call a family of modes. You see, family of modes goes from bus to speed it up bus to tramway to light rail and the trolley bus in between and the metro and so on. Now, if you have a... Uh, you have very uh, uh, large volume of passengers and you use buses, it becomes very expensive and unproductive. That's why you change to higher capacity mode. On the other hand, if you take a high capacity mode and apply where you don't have passengers, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's a waste. You cannot afford then even frequent service. Mm -hmm. And there are examples. Uh, I mentioned uh, Kaohsiung in, uh, in Taiwan. Yeah, we talked about it in the car and record, didn't record it, so maybe you can tell the story again. Right, it's interesting. right. Um, Taiwan, which is a very dynamic and progressive country, they, uh, for Taipei, which is a city of, I believe, somewhere in the five, six million range or so, uh, they decided in 1980 to build a metro. I was one of the five persons they invited to give a short course on how to build the metro. Mm -hmm. We gave that course. They were systematically then building, then preparing and building the metro. Parallel, by the way, they built also high-speed line along the, the entire country. Now, what is that? Uh, 30 years later, they have an excellent metro system, very modern, efficient system uh, with 100 kilometers of length. Mm -hmm. They also have high-speed line which goes from Taipei in the north all the way down to Kaohsiung and that covers most of the cities because that is a corridor country. Mm -hmm. They have now suspended all flights, airplane flights within the country because anywhere along that corridor, high-speed rail gives more, uh, more efficient and more frequent uh, service from center city to, to center city mm -hmm. than the airplanes can. Mm -hmm. The metro, therefore, was justified. However, then some smaller cities said, we want metro, similar to many Russian cities. Uh -huh. Kaohsiung in the south says, we want metro, and they got money, they built two lines, fairly long lines, a cross of two lines. Subways, really beautiful, all in marble, several levels, escalators, everything as a proper, really full-size metro. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, Kaohsiung is several times smaller than Taipei. They were expecting to have uh, at least 600,000 passengers per day or so. 
and they now have uh, about 20 to 30 percent of that only. Mm -hmm. They overshot. Mm -hmm. um, I looked at that system. It's absolutely beautiful, but it's over designed. Mm -hmm. It's like building, uh, if you are a, a family with average income and you build a small palace, mm -hmm. then it'll cost you more than you can even afford. So that this, uh, these two lines, they really have problems how to finance operations. They operate six car trains. Mm -hmm. Now, for that volume, they could have had four car trains, mm -hmm. which means every station would have been about 30% cheaper to build. Mm -hmm. oh, plus today, you could have more frequent service, otherwise six car trains are long intervals, people don't use the line so much. So there have been examples where you overbuilt and within that family of modes that I told you from the bus on the street and accelerated bus and light rail and metro and regional rail, if you build, a, if you select the wrong mode, you really uh, do not achieve efficiency. You can have problems. You are over investing mm -hmm. and over investment then leads you even to uh, excessively expensive operation and the, the people uh, of cities don't don't get the idea that if it's inefficient that it's empty metro nobody use it it will be neither or very expensive right. or will be closed That's right. because it's it's not worth it and people don't don't understand this they think that empty metro is very good because you can easily go and use empty metro yeah, you have two seats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Except who is paying? You're yeah. not paying two fares. That's yeah. That's 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 they don't think. That's they right. think we should pay one fare. We are one person using one metro. Right. So that's an interesting point. Okay, now we will talk a little bit more about uh, Omsk and the uh, other Russian questions. Okay.